How many pupils do you have? To me, that's a very personal question. But I would say, I would answer it this way for you. I have many more than I can really handle. In fact, I have a waiting list. Mm -hmm. uh, you just said two minutes ago that you noticed that people just didn't want to listen to jazz. They wanted to make yeah, well, this is the difference that I was telling you about a few minutes ago. 25, 30 years ago, people would enjoy listening to jazz. But now, they not only want to listen to it, they want to do it. Everybody wants to improvise. This is what you might call the age of self-expression. Everybody's got to do his thing, you know? If you can pick up a brush and go like that, you're a great painter. If you write shit, 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 fuck, fuck, you're a great poet. See, everybody's got to do his thing. And it's like that with jazz. Everybody wants to improvise. So there's much more interest now than there used to be. Do you make records? Well, I made a record about 10 years ago, right here. But I haven't since then. And what I'm trying to think about right now is how to do it quadraphonically. It's what I would like to do, is to record the piano with uh, four microphones around the piano in different places. Because with a microphone here, you get one sound. If there's one down there, you get another sound. If there's one over there, you get another sound. And same thing on this side. So I think that what I'm going to do is uh, get a, a lot of equipment together and try doing that. As I hear that, Sony puts out a very good quadraphonic tape deck. Why don't, why don't you just go to a record company? Well, first of all, I don't like record companies. Why? Well, because they have a lot of material that they own after they pay you for the record day that they turn loose on the public 10, 15, 20 years later. So you can't go into a record studio and uh, play for 10 minutes or half an hour and then stop because it might not be a good take. See, and they don't destroy that material. There are a lot of things that they release that Bird did. Like sometimes there are two bars, sometimes eight bars, and in one place, like they start to play and Bird whistles to stop everybody. Well, I don't think Bird would want all that crap released. So if I do it here, I record as much as I like and make the master tape here, and that's all the record company has. How much do you sell your tape? What do you say? Wow, you French really want to know everything. <coughs> the only part that's difficult when you ask personal questions like that is the Internal Revenue Service might see this film. <laughs> But I, I get a substantial amount for them. Is there anything else that's personal you'd like to know? No. I mean, uh, we have been talking about a lot of uh, free jazz. Don't you think in 48 you were already making some free jazz? Yeah, but this is the difference. In, uh, well, this record, the Capitol record came out in 1949. And there are two tracks on that record which are free jazz. But the people who were playing it We're relating to each other musically. The notes mean something. The rhythm means something. The harmony means something. Even though there's no special program, each person has to relate to the other person musically. Mostly today, what people call free jazz, the notes don't mean anything. It's, It's like, like uh, we'll say that uh, I'm going to play you some free jazz. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's bullshit. So it's not the same thing for that reason. But when we, when we did it, and we used to do it in nightclubs too when we were working, when we did it, everybody really liked it. See, and I didn't tell them what it was until after we did it. Well, I did the same thing when we would play Uh, Bach. We used to play Bach fugues and uh, 
Bach inventions, and this is uh, 24 years ago. And the people loved it. They really loved it. But of course, I didn't tell them what it was. And after Warren and Lee would play uh, a Bach invention, and everybody would flip over it, and I would say, you just heard a Bach invention. And they, didn't, they could hardly believe it. But it was beautiful. Bach with a jazz feeling is very beautiful. Well, do, do you have something against self-expression? Oh, no, not at all. This is, this is what I was trying to tell you. Self-expression is great. But that doesn't mean anybody who does anything is a superstar. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, uh, do you think what you're doing right now is important? It's this program you're doing, do you think it's important? Okay. Say we have this man here who's a filmmaker, very well-known filmmaker, did a film a few years ago and made a lot of money on a jazz musician, bass player. Well, say he made a picture of uh, a young man making love to a cow. Would that be just as important as what you're doing now? I don't know. I have no reference. Sure you do. Can't you picture it? In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, or what I'm trying to get across to you, is that if you're an artist or if you're seriously into something, there's a difference between you and somebody who's not really into it. Like if you're a painter and you got a big canvas on your wall and you got a can of paint in each hand and you stand back and throw the paint with this hand and throw it with that hand and you let it drip, right? Now you got a great painting? Well, I don't think so. Because it's purely accidental. Great art is not accidental. That's my opinion. What's your mu music at the present time? What is it? Yes. Well, it's, uh... Well, it can be a lot of things. It's a lot of free improvising. And I still like to play on uh, a lot of the old standards. I enjoy doing a lot of solo work, although if I'm ever lucky enough to play with a good rhythm section, I do enjoy that. What's your last composition? I don't compose anything. See, that's the, that's the great difference between jazz and any other kind of music. This is the way I think jazz really is. The music is already in your head. And all you do is let your hands, depending on what instrument you play, reproduce what's already up here. It's not instant composing. It's not following any kind of a formula. All you do is hear music in your head and reproduce what you hear as you hear it. So that what you come up with is something completely spontaneous. Like when you hear a great Charlie Parker solo, what you actually do is experience somebody in the act of creating beauty which is spontaneous. And that's different from this uh, uh, great painter who stands back and throws oregano at a canvas and then spills a little paint on it. Uh, why don't you play in public? Uh, Because I think the nightclub scene is dead. So it's a big problem we have. All, all the people really want to listen to jazz and love it But they're not interested in the nightclub scene. They don't care about it, especially young people. First place, it costs too much money. Also, we have other people who have these uh, big, dumb circuses like